Yes, this is how I felt when I was studying for the MCAT, and I hate the MCAT. And I know that hate is a very strong word, but I mean it with the full force of meaning. I hate the MCAT. It's terrible. It's the worst. It's the worst test in the world. And the title was not clickbait. I actually scored really low on my practice diagnostic test. And I was freaking out because I was like, how am I going to be a doctor? You know what I'm saying? Like the score was so bad to the point where I screenshotted it so that I would look back on it every so often when I was studying for the test for motivation. I hate so much about the things that you choose to be. So yeah, I took the MCAT three times, so you don't have to. So let's just get right to the point. Here's how I'm gonna break down this video. First, I'm gonna talk about my past MCAT journey. Then I'm gonna go into each section and give specific tips for each section. And finally, the general tips that are probably the most helpful, so you wanna stick around for that. The only reason why you put yourself through this grueling process is because you wanna be a doctor, and I really respect the grind. So before we start, let's just take time just to breathe a little bit and pat yourself on the back. And I don't mean this in like a condescending way, but like, this is a big deal. The fact that you took this step to take the MCAT, like the fact that you're pursuing this dream of yours, like that's a big deal. So power clap on three. One, two, three. The first time I took it was in August 2021, and I spent about three months preparing for it, but I was also doing research on the side. Yeah, I was just very unprepared. I wish I could have told myself to postpone the test, but I didn't. And I took it anyways during winter break. I took it again in January 2022, and that was an entire mess because it was a bio section. I was freaking out because I was running out of time, and... <laughs> So then the third and final time I took the test, that was another whole ordeal because I was trying to find test sites, but they're just like unavailable. Finally, like after a few hours, one popped up in like South Dakota. So I was literally about to go to South Dakota to take the MCAT, y'all. Like, what was I thinking? Thankfully, like through God's grace, a test opened up in Chicago. And so I was able to go back home and take the test. And I got my final score there, which was a 516. Okay, I think you feel better now. Thanks for listening, guys. <laughs> I know it sucks, but you should probably memorize all the formulas. Like just take a day, go to a coffee shop, look up like white noise for 10 hours and just cram all of that. And then use Anki to kind of solidify the information so you don't forget it in the future. When a question pops up where you just need to use a formula, just basic plug and chug, you get free points for doing that. And so I would definitely recommend that. Free points is good because you need all the points you can get on the MCAT to score well. <laughs> Do not neglect cars practice. Seriously, don't. I'm gonna say this again. Do not neglect cars practice. Please do not. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was kind of up close and intimate with like that, but you, you get what I'm saying. If your car score sucks, you can still get better with practice. Like there is hope for you. There's only a few questions that the AMC actually asks you in cars. So if you just do like one to two passages a day for like three months, you'll get the hang of it. You basically, you'll get a feel of what AMC will ask you. You'll be able to read the passage and then predict what kind of questions the AMC will ask you. For reference, I got a 125 my first time, but I was able to up that to 129 my final attempt and i did like one to two jack weston passages i really recommend jack weston passages they have one passage per day that they upload so you just have new content every single day so doing those every day it will definitely help you improve your reading abilities your ability to comprehend the material and your ability to pinpoint what the main idea of the passages cars is so important to get a good mcat score like you need to do decently well on cars for you to do well on the mcat just don't look like cars. I really recommend UWorld for this because they ask really hard questions. And I think that's really good when you're preparing for the MCAT. I feel like a lot of questions in this section test your ability to use the content information that you learned during like your first month or two of studying to the information in the passage. So taking third party tests like LTS and Next Steps are just a good way for you to get into that mode of thinking of what kind of questions are going to ask you in the passage. But also you should definitely remember do because you don't want to forget the information that you learned from content review. This is mostly just memorization. There's a 300 page Khan Academy document that you can find on Reddit. And that basically does the job if you just read through it. I know 300 pages sounds like a lot and it is, but if you do like 10 pages per day for a month, it's pretty reasonable. Yeah, you gotta just memorize those stuff and um, just hope for the best really. <laughs> okay, now here are the general tips that you stayed for. <laughs> 
you need to remember the content when you are taking the MCAT, which I know sounds really intuitive, but I was that guy who studied for two months content and then seven days before the exam just forgot everything. Hello darkness, my old friend. When you're doing your initial content review, it's really important that you solidify that information into long-term memory. And so for this, I'd recommend Anki. 100% I'd recommend Anki. I know there's a lot of people who don't use Anki and do well, but if you're like me and you're just dumb, you should probably use Anki. <laughs> it's actually really nice because you don't even need to make the cards yourself. There's pre-made decks made for you. And so for this, I used Jack Sparrow and Milodown, a combination of those two. Any one that you use, it's just good for you to use it to reactivate those parts of your memory so that you're able to remember the information that you learned and so you don't forget it, like me, seven days before the exam. <laughs> This leads me to number two, which is if you don't feel ready, you should definitely not take a test. What I mean by this is that I feel like, of course, you're going to feel kind of scared and nervous about the exam. But there's a certain level of readiness that you would feel before going into the exam. This can be taking your AMC practice tests and you're getting overall good scores or the scores that you want. That's probably a good indicator that you should probably take the exam. But if you were like me, I fluctuated from like a 508 to like a 513 to a 520 to a 514. Like it was just all over the place. And I wish that I took more time and postponed my initial test date so that I could have uh, stabilized my score a little bit more before taking it. You'll never be completely ready, but you want the confidence that your test scores are stable before taking it because confidence is key for this test. The basic framework that most people use, I think, when taking the MCAT is like a three to four month period. I don't recommend going above that because I think then it's just not efficient. Let's say you do like a four month sort of ordeal. Then for a month and a half, you do content review. Then for another month and a half, you do practice questions from like UWorld and do practice tests from like Altius and the next step. And for the final month, you focus solely on AAMC material. And this is the most important material that you'll have because it's literally made by the test producers. So definitely, if you're running out of time, stick with AAMC material because that will be the most helpful for you. There's a section bank, the Q banks, the practice tests, all those you'll need to do. <laughs> Finally, please make sure to pace yourself. This MCAT journey is a marathon, not a race. And so you want to make sure that you don't burn out halfway like I did. So just take some time sometimes if you're feeling too stressed, just to go out and enjoy time with friends or alone, watching Netflix or whatever it is. Take some time for yourself and make sure that your mental health is good. For me, a more sustainable option that I had after my burnout was taking just one day of the week where it was just like a rest day for me, like a flex day, I guess you can say. If there were some things that I was behind on in studying, then I would use that day to kind of catch up. Or if I was on track, then I would use that day just to rest and just have fun for a little bit. Huh. Attached in the description are my MCAT notes for content review, and hopefully it helps you guys somehow. Just a disclaimer though, a lot of these notes were actually taken from a Reddit post, and I personalized it to my liking. And so a lot of credit goes to that Reddit user, which I'll link in the description. Yeah, free notes for you. Hopefully it helps somehow. But yeah, if you found any of this helpful, I would really appreciate if you could support the channel and subscribe. It really helps channels like me a lot. I'm trying to grow, you know what I'm saying? Look, the MCAT really sucks. Like, it's the worst, like I said at the beginning. But I hope you found some of this information that I just spewed at you helpful. Just remember to enjoy, you know, the small moments when you're taking the MCAT, whether it's like a score bump that you see, maybe it's like the rest day where you go out with friends or whatever, whatever it is, just hope that you can take care of your mental health while doing this because that's definitely very important. And just remember that at the end of the day, the MCAT is just one part of your application. So important, it definitely is, but worth dying over, definitely not. So take care of yourself and I will see you on the other side. Peace.